Hey guys, I'm starting a Manwa channel. I'll leave a link in the comments. I'll bring a lot of works there so if you like it, subscribe there. Let's go to the video. On a full moon night, a place is attacked by monsters. Two young people claim that this is the path they must follow to become what they so desire. In the girl's case, she wants to be the supreme commander, while he, the boy who becomes a hero. And meanwhile, a meeting begins, and the speaker comments on a report regarding the situation in Mato, made by people from her country. And in another corner of the city, a young man named Yuki Wakura complains about how hard his work is, but the other two employees claim that doing it in threes makes the job easier and when he turns to his colleagues the room is shining and they give credit for their good work to yuki as he is much more skilled with these tasks than they are and while they talk the other students start to arrive too and then one student asks wakura to correct something on his clothes and when he finishes the work at lightning speed the student is impressed and says that he is always very competent however wakura says that this would not make him popular with girls so it is not such a useful talent but his colleagues comment that he is actually very good at these things, and he explains that his sister taught him, moreover, how to men not able to obtain powers from peaches, they must hone their own skills. And to facilitate his learning, his sister threatened to beat him if he failed, and at the end of that afternoon he leaves the company, and reflects on his life being that of a worker now, but halfway through, a fog begins to come in, take the place, and suddenly he is transported to Mato, where he starts to hyperventilate, and then Wakura takes his manual, and a girl explains the mishap Mato refers to the alternative dimension connected through gates that suddenly appeared in several places in Japan. And with that, a lot of damage was caused in their world by Shuki or civilians wandering through the bush, also known as Mato mishaps, and she informs them that if a person gets lost in Mato, they should stay put and wait for the demonic defense force. And upon hearing this, Wakura tries to calm down more, and feels that nothing bad will happen if he remains still, but a monster appears out of nowhere and tries to attack him, so he manages to escape, but soon after he is cornered by several others, monsters of the same species, and when he was about to be killed, a human appears to save him, and she claims that he is a very unlucky guy to be suddenly attacked by Mado Mishap, and then she starts a battle against all the monsters, and claims that she will save Wakura, in which the girl introduces herself as Kyoka Yuzen, the commander of the 7th squad of the demonic defense force, and then Kyoka tells him to stay behind her, but when he sees other monsters approaching, he gets scared, and asks if that wouldn't be a problem, so she tells him to get on top of the monster. And in the middle of the trip, they are surprised by the other girls from the 7th squad, and they inform them that they were unable to find any more victims in the area, and so Kyoka tells them to expand the search area, and when doing so, Okawamura notices that there are groups of Shukis approaching them between 6 and 9 o'clock. And then Kyoka tells them to deal with this monster, and in the meantime she will be responsible for ensuring Wakura's safety. But first, Azuma advises the boy not to do anything unnecessary if he wants to be saved. Then they leave the place, and the girls start a fight against the monsters, and Wakura explains that among the women who obtained their powers from the Mado Peaches, there are combat specialists who are called the Demonic Defense Force. And seeing how they act, Wakura deduces that they are part of this organization, and meanwhile, the girls find another victim, but Tsusiu says she is at her limit for today so Azuma tells her to increase her resistance. And on the way she says she feels bad for Susiu, but they have a child there who needs care, and then the boy wakes up and finds out that he ended up a victim of the mishap bush, but upon hearing this, he just asks why, your sister. And then the scene cuts to Wakura, and he asks where he is being taken, but Kyoka states that there are three things that must be followed by victims inside the Mato, the first is to remain silent waiting for rescue, and the second thing is to prevent when encountering a shuki, prioritizing your life as much as possible. And finally, he shouldn't waste time talking, and in the middle of the way she suddenly stops, when Wakura sees a girl being chased by a monster, and then Kyoka rescues her, and when fighting the creatures, she activates a temporary barrier in back from them. And Kyoka feels that she will have problems facing the monsters, because if she were alone it would be much easier, and Kyoka explains that she had no luck with the blessing of her peach, after all her skill does not keep up with her strength, and this makes her your dream of becoming supreme commander and never becomes a reality. But when she remembers this, she becomes enraged, and states that she will become the supreme commander whatever the cost, in this she remembers something that she has never tested on a man, as she imagined it would be useless, but she finds
finds herself with no way out and feels that he must make a decision as soon as possible. She then goes to him and says that she will need his help to get out of there and when he hears that it will be useful, he gets excited and guarantees that he will do anything to help. And then she says she will make him her slave and that immediately wipes the smile off Wakura's face and as for his sister, she asks the girl to move away from Wakura a little and keep her eyes closed. And Kyoka explains that if he is enhanced, they will be able to escape and survive from that place. So he understands that he will have to fight the monsters and is starting to get scared but she reminds him that Wakura had said he would do anything. And with that, she moves her hand towards him so they can start the whole process and then she makes him lick her finger. After that, he undergoes a transformation and the other girls from the organization appear just in time. As for Kyoka, she is impressed with all the strength the boy has acquired. And then she takes his sister and rides Wakura, where she begins to control him and says that he has excellent reflexes, and after destroying some enemies, a new, even bigger monster appears. And then Kyoka tells the other girls to take care of the victim, as she will fight the monster, and in a few seconds she and Wakura manage to defeat the enemy. And upon seeing such strength, Azuma questions who exactly this man could be, and then he returns to normal, so the commander tells the other girls to leave first, and says that she will talk to Wakura first first. And then she states that he has a lot of power, and that's why Wakura will be able to work for her more often as her slave. But first, Kyoka says that she must explain more about her ability to him, and then the girl kisses him as a way of saying reward his labors as his slave. However, she notices that he did more than she expected, and that's why Kyoka goes up to him and gives him another kiss. But Wakura, embarrassed, says that she doesn't need to do that anymore. After all, he was the one who was saved. And because he struggles a lot, his hand and ends up hitting her cap, leaving her very angry, but she regains her sanity, and explains that in the beginning she only gave pork to reward her slaves, but according to her ability as it improved, these rewards changed, and now its body acts on impulse, rewarding slaves the way they would like to be rewarded. And then she kisses him again, and after that Wakura is perplexed by the situation, as he never imagined that his first kiss would happen in Mato, and Kyoka comments that if only one of the Shukis managed to gain access to their world there would be at least a dozen victims. Therefore her objective is to become the supreme commander of the demonic defense force and exterminate the Shukis as quickly as possible, and she claims that the current commander is very negligent, but she still has the Wakura, and can use all her skill in boy, and with that she believes she can reach that position. And Wakura says he's not very good with many things besides household chores, but she says that's even better, because he can help her with that issue too, plus Kyoka reminds him that Wakura took a risk to save that girl, and that makes him a real man. And upon hearing this, Wakura states that he wants to become a hero of the forest, and he remembers how boring his job is, after all the days are always monotonous and the same, but if he enters this new dimension of the forest, he will you will be able to fight Shookies just like you did before. Furthermore, he will also be able to avenge his older sister, and he will receive rewards from Kyoka, so it will be worth every effort. He is taken to the dormitory of the demonic defense force, and then Kyoka explains that this in it was built according to the yin and yang principles of bush. In addition, this dormitory is also equipped with a powerful barrier. And then Wakura enters his new work environment, and she guarantees that she will take care of the bureaucratic paperwork for him. And when they enter the dormitory, the other girls inform him that they sent the two victims to their parents, so they ask what the boy will do it there. And Kyoka reveals that Wakura will work at the inn as a caretaker. And upon hearing this, the boy is disappointed, but Kyoka explains that while they are in battle, he will be her slave, otherwise he will be the inn's caretaker. And she informs him that he will have some work to do with the other girls, as they are not easy to deal with, but she reminds him that Wakura has great domestic skills, so he will take care of the work there. Then the boy asks if he wouldn't be a member of the demonic defense force, and Kyoka says that a man could never take on that position, and then the girls start to fill him with housework, but Okawamura goes to him to reassure him, and says who arrived shortly before, so will support you as your veteran. But Azuma counters this, and orders him to obey her as his superior, but even so, they extend their hand to Wakura, and welcome him to the seventh squad of the elite bush troop.
And when starting his job as a janitor, Yuki leaves the entire area shining and feels that he did a good job worthy of reward but when he looks around he feels that the place he is in is not that pleasant. And then a monster tries to attack him but the barrier protects him from the blow so the boy deduces that these monsters could appear near the dormitory too. And upon seeing him lying on the ground, NEI goes to see if the boy is okay and she informs him that the seventh squad is in the meadow in the unfortunate area southwest of Eurekiman and it is for this reason that the Shookies appear more often there than in the other dormitories. And then he pays attention to the name Eurekiman that she had said, and she explains that the Mato is an alternative dimension as big as the city of Tokyo, and this dimension is divided into eight different directions, and each of them has its own strength of demonic defense stored there. And she says that the fourth direction was skipped by the squad, as they had a bad feeling about going there, and he says that she helps him a lot with these intentions, as Yuki has no idea about Mado. And NEI says that as his senpai, her duty is to teach him, but the boy feels that he will never get used to being a child's kohai, so he asks what they should do about the monster. And NEI explains that he poses no risk, so they should ignore him, and Himari appears full of energy, shooting at both of them, but she is careful not to hit them and says that if she wanted, she could have killed them calmly. And then Yuki says that she's missing the point there, but she just tells him to go make dinner, and says that just the fact that he's living in the same dorm as them is already a privilege, so he should be more grateful. And when poking him, Yuki notices that being a janitor really doesn't mean anything, and suddenly the boy feels someone's presence, but soon disregards this hypothesis, claiming that this sensation must just be his imagination. And after preparing dinner, everyone praises him, saying that he is a real chef, and NEI suggests that he teach her how to cook too. As for Himari, she just tells him to keep up his good work while washing the dishes and cleaning the bathtub, and this goes for cleaning every other room in the house. And as he continues his work, he feels like his life is being thrown away, because instead of being a hero, he is just serving as a do-it-all janitor. And then he comments to Himari that she had said that he would help her on the battlefield too, however Yuki feels that his main task is doing household chores and nothing else. Then Commander Kyuka tells him that for now his work will continue to be this, and Himari threatens him with her sword, saying that he must not be stupid enough to try to go against the commander orders. And when he sees that her arm can also become a sword, the boy is surprised. The commander explains that the girls must feel uncomfortable with the presence of a man in their bedroom, however he is an excellent caretaker of the house, and is also an essential key to his ability, so she asks the girls to try to treat him more kindly. However, she guarantees that she will not let any mistake go unpunished, if he does something wrong, and after that, Himari goes to the shower, and by coincidence Yuki was passing by and ends up seeing the girl naked but soon hide so as not to have any problems. However, Shu Shu catches him in the act, and says that he let his true intentions flow, and when he sees her so suddenly, the boy is startled, and the girl returns to her normal size, and explains that her ability allows her to change her appearance, size as much as you want. And then Shu Shu takes a photo of him, and informs him that he has had his eye on him for a long time, and when showing the photo to him, Yuki tenderly explains herself, saying that she is understanding things wrong. But the girl just wonders what the commander will think when she sees sees this image, so he tries to bribe her to not say anything, but she refuses his money, and says that if he wants these photos not to be leaked, he will have to become her slave. But Yuki claims that he is already a slave, and upon returning to her room, Yuki starts working on cleaning the area, and feels that he must find a way to delete the photo from her device, otherwise the girl will intimidate him into rest of your life. And suddenly she drops her cell phone in the corner, and Yuki sees this as a chance to try to delete the photo, but she reaches her cell phone before he does, and instead of reaching for the device, she grabs her underwear. At this the boy blushes, and says that she instigated him to do that on purpose, and when asking if she doesn't mind him touching her underwear, Shu Shu explains that he doesn't see her as a man, instead, the girl sees him as a really cool pet and nothing more. Besides, he is the caretaker of the home, so your underwear would be just another piece of clothing that he should tidy, so he is free to touch it as much as he wants. However, she takes a photo of him holding his underwear, to 
use as blackmail material and when finishing the work in her room Yuki becomes thoughtful about these photos and deduces that he won't have any problems with it. After all, all these photos were taken in accident contexts so Kyuka probably wouldn't punish him. And upon seeing the commander training with Himari, the boy watches from afar until Shuki appears just in time. Kyuka takes advantage of this and demonstrates to the girl how to fight and upon seeing her tearing the enemy apart, Yuki is completely in shock and feels that she should not see the photos Shushu took at all. And then Nei goes to him to say that she has news to tell him and the girl informs him that the commander, Miss Himari, and her will leave the dormitory to participate in a meeting soon. And so he must be responsible for taking care of things with Miss Shushu in their absence. And in the meantime, the girl stands at the door listening to everything and notes that this will be an excellent opportunity to make fun of him even more. And after that, she tells him to massage her and asks if he has experience with this. And Yuki explains that he was used to massaging his older sister so he already has a lot of practice. And as for Shushu, she says that she is the youngest among her sisters and comments that she always attended a girl's school so she had never had contact with a man before and she claims that this is what made her interested in analyzing his every step. And finally, Shushu says that she only decided to turn him into her slave because she found the idea fun, besides, she would only have moved to Mato precisely to live a more exciting life. And she states that she sees no problem in betting her life on this goal. After all, killing Shuki is something that amuses her a lot, and after the massage, Shu Shu calls him to play a fighting game and suggests that the loser take off a piece of clothing every time you are defeated. So he takes the opportunity to oppress her in the video game and force her to apologize to him. However Yuki gets beaten up in the game and ultimately ends up having to get naked, but he tells her that he can't do that. But Shu Shu insists, as he has never seen a naked man before, and so Yuki refuses again, saying that if he stays half up things won't end well, and upon hearing this, she uses her ability to get bigger and take it like he was a max steel. And then she forcefully takes off his shorts and makes fun of the size of the boy's joke, and in the middle of the fun, they hear a bang and go outside, and the two come across a giant Shuki destroying the barrier. And then she uses her paradigm shift ability to become the size of the monster, and then Shu Shu attacks it countless times until finishing it off. And with that the girl decides to return to normal, but another enemy that was hidden appears and attacks her from behind, and when she tries to prepare an attack, two other Shuki hold her by the leg, giving the giant Shuki an opening to attack her. Seeing this Yuki forces his mind to try to find a way to help, and then he remembers that he transformed when his lips touched Kyuka's hand, and following this logic he takes one of her gloves and kisses her, in order to transform. Again, however, just the glove is not enough to transform him, so he takes a shirt from her and does the same test, and this time Yuki manages to transform for a measly second. And then the boy takes her boots to test, and this time Yuki manages to transform into a half monster, and when he attacks Shuki he manages to kill him easily, leaving Shu Shu impressed. However, he begins to fall with his body motionless, but ends up having his fall cushioned by Shu Shu's beauties, and after all this, she says that him forcing a transformation was very risky, and Yuki claims that he only did this to prove that she was wrong in saying that men are very weak, and as she gets closer to him, the girl is startled when she sees his mini crack on display, and the boy tries to explain himself about this, and says that he only became like this because of his transformation, and after that, the girls return from the meeting, and Yuki comments to them that they should find a way to fix the cracks in the barrier to around the dorm. But the commander tells him that the boy shouldn't worry, as the barriers that protect important locations can repair themselves as long as the damage isn't too serious. And then she returns to reward him with a massage for transforming and helping Shu Shu. And as for the girl, the commander claims that she underestimated her enemy too much, and that could have cost her her life. So Shu Shu is willing to pay more attention next time, and the commander orders her to help Yuki with the household duties, as a form of gratitude for the help the boy provided her. And when the girls leave the place, she sits on top of him, to show her dominance as his master, and says that Yuki made her very curious to know even more things about men. And then she shows him yet another compromising photo she took of him, and tells him to continue collaborating with her in her research about men, which makes Yuki even more desperate, as she has many photos that could incriminate him. And Shu Shu in turn says he won't leave him alone, and meanwhile three girls face problems when they come across a giant Shuki. And then one of the girls ends up staying behind, and is attacked by the monster, and when he was about to eat her, her master goes there to stop him, and tells him that Yuki must be 
somewhere in the woods at this time, exact moment, so they should go pay him a visit. And when they enter the place, the commander orders Yuki waits outside while she does the paperwork, and in this he notices that the 5th squad's portal is connected to Yamagata. And after leaving him waiting for a while, she returns, and upon seeing her Yuki is delighted, but to hide it he says he is just happy to be back in his home world. And on the way, he asks where they are going, but upon hearing his question she ignores him and continues moving forward, and meanwhile, Shu Shu asks for Yuki and NEI for the information that he left with the commander that day earlier, and the two would have gone to the Yamagata Pass, and returning to the two, the commander takes him to a cemetery, and informs him that there was an incident on Mount Gasen in Oisawa, where dozens of Shuki roamed this world, and one of them had an overwhelming power, which reminds her of him until the nowadays, and because he only had one horn, she nicknamed him Unihorn, as the other Shuki who passed by that day were exterminated by the demonic defense force, but after examining the records, she discovered that Unihorn managed to escape back into the forest through the portal, so he was the only Shuki who managed to survive the fight against the demonic defense force. And Kyuka says that she still has some scores to settle with this Shuki, so she tells Yuki to be prepared for when that day comes, as together they will avenge all the deaths that Unihorn caused. And after leaving the cemetery, she calls him to return to the forest, but Yuki asks them to take a break at a cafe first, but Kyuka insists on going to the forest, as this is more important. And then to convince her, Yuki shows a parfait that they make in this cafe, and with that Kyuka decides to take a break, and as they sit down, she states that he was very assertive in choosing the coffee, but even so she says she is more worried about the situation in the forest. At this Yuki reveals that he lost his older sister in a bush accident too, so he states that he knows how she feels, however Yuki says that she must take care of herself if she wants to carry out her revenge successfully. And then he reminds her about a phrase she herself had said, in this case, she had advised taking a break from work, otherwise they would exhaust themselves, to which Kyuka says that he really knows how to persuade a person. And when her parfait arrives, the girl is delighted with the sweet, and Yuki is once again drooling at her beauty, but says he was just traveling in his thoughts, and he notices that this is the first time he has seen a smile on her face, of the commander, and it brings back some memories of his sister, where she cooks and adds a seasoning that he had suggested, and then she hugs him, and tells him that he should keep working working hard in the kitchen, after all boys are defined by their cooking skills. And seeing him so distracted, the commander reminds him to eat his parfait, and in the middle of the conversation, they receive an emergency call from the bush, but because the shell was only hit once, this means that the problem it does not pose a risk to anyone's life. But Kyuka still says that something serious must be happening, so their break ends there, so she transforms him and they quickly reach the forest. And then Kyuka says she will change, and calls Yuki to accompany her, and already in the room she allows him to take off her socks, as a way of rewarding him. And after that, they meet with the other girls, and they inform them that during the day's patrol, they discovered a formation similar to a crater that appeared 21 kilometers to the south, and along with that, a large amount of Shuki also appeared. And NEI notices that the monsters are remaining in that area as if it were a nest, so Kyuka comments that this problem needs their attention immediately, but eliminating all these Shuki will be quite a task for the 7th squad. But Yuki is still excited to carry out this mission, and so they divide into three vehicles and go to the crater site, and when they get there, Kyuka tells him to wait for her signal to start the attack. And meanwhile the other girls step forward and start killing the Shuki, but Kyuka explains that if they merge, it will be easier to finish them off. And then she tells Yuki to prepare, because as soon as the monsters gather more, they will enter the battle too, and suddenly, they notice that Shuki only has one horn, that is, he is the unihorn that Kyuka spoke about back there. And after trying to attack them, a girl appears on top of the unihorn and shoots a spell with her tongue, and then Kyuka enters the battle, and says she is relieved to have finally found the monster she wanted so much to kill. And then she asks who the girl on top of Shuki is, and she just introduces herself as the archenemy of the demonic defense force, and the girl asks if Kyuka had seen her brother somewhere, but she just leaves. And in the middle of the fight, 
despite the girl comments that her brother was obsessed with her as he always followed her around when they were young but as he got older he turned into a delinquent. However, she claims that she had fun days with her brother anyway as she taught the boy good manners and Yuki finds it strange that she can speak even though she is a shuki. after all, this sets her apart from all the other monsters. And then she goes back to talking more and when she was about to say her brother's name, a creature gets in her way and this makes the girl very furious to the point of killing the monster in a matter of seconds. And upon seeing this, Kyuka goes up and says that this girl must be the commander of all Shuki, and then she states that Kyuka knows nothing about Mato and his countless curses. And although the girl thinks that Kyuka has a good purpose, she decides to kill them, but when arresting Yuki, she hesitates when she realizes that he is not a Shuki, and so Kyuka takes advantage of the girl's distraction to attack her. And after some attacks she tries to escape, but Kyuka is overcome by hatred and promises that she will kill her in the same way she killed the villagers who tried to escape her attacks that day. But when she looks back, she sees Yuki helping her allies, and she calms down and decides to retreat too, as her priority is to keep her friends well, and when she thinks more about the out of control she just had, Kyuka regrets it because this it almost cost her squad mates their lives. And when they return home, she comments that the girl's wounds were light, so the two will recover by the next day, and as for Yuki's reward, he asks to receive something very suspicious, and this leaves her scared of how his filthy subconscious can be so strange. And in the middle of the act, he says that there is something to report to her, but it cannot be done while they are like this, and then he regrets that the monster has escaped, but Kyuka states that the lives of her companions were more important in that situation. And well, she deduces that that humanoid that was on top of Shuki must be some new species of these monsters, and Kyuka says she is surprised to see a Shuki being able to speak the human language. And speaking of this new species, Yuki talks again about his older sister who disappeared in an accident in the bush, and says that that humanoid looks a lot like her, so he believes she could be his sister. Furthermore, that humanoid had a strange reaction when she saw her face, and Kyuka remembers that she had said that she was looking for a younger brother, and also said that he was the most handsome man ever, but Yuki says that last part doesn't suit him at all, and Kyuka says that maybe this humanoid isn't his sister, because there's no way a human could have that much strength, and besides, no one has ever heard of a human becoming a Shuki. And after returning to his his domestic work, Yuki wonders why his sister would be attacking the demonic defense forces, if this humanoid being is in fact her, what's more, he also doesn't understand how she would have stayed alive until now, and why she was working with that monster, and while he's thinking about these questions, the pot starts to boil and spill, so he turns off the fire, and then any eye goes up to him and punches him in the face for exposing the team to danger, but after that, she also thanks him for going to face strong monsters to save Shu Shu, and for that reason she is is willing to help him prepare the food, and while the two work together he decides to leave his sister's matter to another time, after all he will be able to come clean about this story the next time they meet. And meanwhile, the humanoid girl from before returns to her friends, and then she says that that monster was certainly Yuki in some way, and she wonders when the demonic defense force allowed men to enter the organization. And even though she has many doubts about what happened, she states that this reunion was very pleasant, and in the middle of the bath, the boy is surprised surprised by Shu Shu saying that in a way that he will like, and she is willing to wash his back like thanks for Yuki saving her. And in the middle of all this, he is unsure whether or not to turn his back to see if she is wearing clothes, and then he ends up looking, and when he realizes that she really was in a way that he likes her, he gets scared and leaves, running. But in doing so, he ends up coming face to face with Himari changing, and then the girl chases him with a chainsaw, when suddenly two other girls appear there through a portal. The sixth squad's command introduces herself as Tenka Izumo, while the other girl introduces herself as Yachiho Azuma, the commander's deputy. And then Tenka asks Yuki to go get Mrs. Kyuka, and meanwhile Yachiho stares at Himari with a malicious look. And after that, Tenka praises the Tiyuki, but soon moves on to the main topic, and comments that Kyuka received a memo from Supreme Commander. And Tenka explains that in general her squads operate independently, however she believes that the demon's defense force should be more organized. And she also informs that she found out about Himari having fainted after being attacked by a Shuki, so Yachiho disdains the girl, and states that she will throw the Azuna family's reputation into the mud like that. But Kyuka informs that these Shuki 
Suzuki are not weak after all the third squad also had problems with them and with that she understands the importance of them cooperating together again. And then Yachiho states that having Kyuka's presence once again is comforting. However she says that there are some people hesitating to let her help the seventh squad. And although she doesn't name names, Himari takes the hint and Kyuka explains that first and foremost they must evaluate the current capabilities of each of their teams. So she suggests that they play a bush exhibition game with the teams and upon hearing this Yuki doesn't understand anything and then NEI explains that this event is a competition of strength and skill between two squads. And when proposing the challenge, Tenka accepts immediately but they leave to adjust their numbers first so Himari asks Kyuka to prepare her for the match because even though the training is hard, Himari wants to guarantee victory. That said, she claims Yuki as her slave from now on and then he cooks for the girls and explains a little more about how he made the soup they are eating. At this Himari comments that his domestic skills are also excellent for a slave and upon hearing this he reminds her that he was forced to be her slave. And Himari explains that this has to do with the bush exhibition game so she will have to win and then Yuki states that this doesn't explain why he has to be her slave. And Kyuka explains that they are keeping things simpler by just resolving it with individual combat and because Himari's sister was very rude to her, Kyuka tells her to take advantage of this opportunity to kick her ass. And after that, Yuki asks again why he needs to be her slave, and Himari explains that in addition to transforming her body parts into weapons, she also has another ability. She shows an image on her cell phone, and when Yuki looks at it, she interprets it as a collectible card game, and then Himari explains that with this card she is able to learn other people's skills and use them. At this Yuki states that this is a very appealing ability, and Himari says that by selecting a person's ability on her phone, she is able to implement all of that person's powers into her. Therefore she is able to use the commander at that very moment. And in the middle of the trip, they are surprised by several Shuki, and upon taking on Kyuka's powers, Yuki kisses her hand and activates his transformation, but Himari notices that he has a different appearance than when Kyuka summons him. And when trying to move, he manages to attack Shuki with an even greater speed than before. However he feels that he is not as strong as before, so Yuki decides to attack them as much as he can. And when you realize the size of the power their ice in her hands, Himari states that this is the key to her being able to defeat her sister, and upon defeating all the enemies, she praises his good work and says that this is the only way to make a man useful to the organization. Having said that, she lifts her clothes for him automatically, and then Yuki explains that this is the price of her ability, and Himari understands why Kyuka said that using her ability would be physically demanding, but she wonders why she didn't able to move your body, and he deduces that this is because his reward hasn't ended yet, and to get it over with, she decides to throw herself at him, and as they continue their journey he comments that she would be better off using another skill. However, Himari says that she cannot do that, as there is a compatibility component to learning such skills, and in the case of Shushu's growth ability, she states that she could not use it in its best form, so she only has this power left. Kyuka. Then Yuki asks why she is so motivated to beat her sister, and then she explains that she was born into the Azuma family an influential family with great achievements in the bush, and because all her sisters were successful, the whole family I put a lot of hope in Himari too. However, she was never good enough, and that's why she ends up having no results to show, and upon hearing this, Yuki feels represented by her story. And Himari explains that because she was like this, she was constantly teased, but now she's been given a single chance to show them that everyone is wrong about her. And that's why Himari states that he must cooperate with her victory, and then he finds finds it difficult to cooperate with her asking like that, and Himari reveals that her goal is to become a heroine like the commander, and to be able to take the first step towards this goal, she will need to defeat her sister. And upon hearing her speech about overcoming, Yuki feels that she is exactly like him, and then he remembers that his goal is also to become stronger, even if his reasons for doing so are different. And Yuki believes that she is the key for him to achieve his goal too, so he states that he will help her with her mission to defeat Yachiho, but Himari says that because he is her slave, Yuki could not refuse in any way. Form. And when talking about the enemy, he asks what her sister's abilities are, and Himari talks about a power called Golden Hour, in which case she can control time in her own way, and upon hearing this, Yuki takes away the smile from his face, and deduces that they are pretty screwed. And meanwhile, Yachiho feels that her sister is talking about her right now, and so she claims that she will put her sister in her rightful place in the friendly bush game. And as for Himari, 
She explains that her sister's power is indeed powerful but using it too often will tire her and it will be at that moment that they defeat her but Yuki says that the fact that she can use this ability more than once will only make everything more complicated. However, Himari informs that to use her power, Yachiho needs to take a strange pose, so Yuki has the idea of taking advantage of her speed to deliver the final blow to her, as this way she won't have time to use her ability. And he deduces that a frontal blow will be the the fastest movement is the ideal thing to do, so Himari asks them to train this movement to make it even stronger. And then he channels his strength into his legs, and soon after, Suki appears at the right time for him to test the speed of his punch, but when attacking the monster, Yuki notices that it didn't work. And Himari explains that he exaggerated when channeling his strength into his feet, and this means that his attack was not as strong, but she suggests that they continue practicing until they perfect this technique. And suddenly Kyuka goes over to them to watch the training, and upon noticing Himari's technique of channeling strength into a single point, she comments to Himari that the girl did very well. However, she leaves the place and tells Himari not to forget the essence that makes Kyuka's power hers, and upon hearing this she climbs onto Yuki, and says she understands what the commander meant by that, in this case the ideal would be Himari should be riding Yuki while he trains, so she can use the chains to control him however she wants. So she orders him to channel all his strength into his legs, and when he does this Yuki feels a greater power this time, and when he hits Shuki, his blow pierces him, making his final blow a success. However, Yuki says that he is not sure if he is capable of replicating this attack, but Himari states that he can practice with many Shuki until he gets the hang of it, and after training a lot, he falls to the ground very tired. In this Himari explains that his technique requires a lot of precision, so they must practice until he gains consistency in the attack, and as the training continues, continues, the day of the exhibition match finally arrives. And then Tenka and his team appear, demonstrating total confidence in the fight. As for Himari, she states that she is ready to face anything, and what's more, she comments that she will use a technique that her sister has not yet seen. And Shu Shu says that with the end of the match, Himari and Yuki's team will dissipate, and Himari says that he belongs to Kyuka, so it's natural that she can't keep him, but her real intention is to take advantage of his powers to defeat your sister. After all this victory, victory will also increase the squad's reputation. And in the middle of their bath, Sahara appears there, and after the bath, Himari comes face to face with her sister and states that the victory is already hers, and upon hearing this Yachiho deduces that she has a plan in mind, but she wonders if Himari will be able to put her plan into practice. At this Himari stutters, but says that she will be able to do it, and then Yachiho leaves the place saying that she is just delaying her defeat, but Yuki reassures her, and reminds Himari that they trained a lot lot, so there is no way they can lose. In this she states that he is very arrogant for a slave, after all she already knows that he will beat her sister, and when they arrive in Mado, he receives a block of wood to put his name on, and Kyuka explains that that object is used to trigger Gine Bison's ability, and this ability will create a barrier that will draw the limit of the land, a limit that can only be overcome by those who sign their names on the wooden block, in addition, any damage suffered during combat will be healed. There, Gine Bison from the 10th squad introduces herself to them, and then creates the combat arena, after which Kyuka grants her the mission of conducting and judging that combat. And then she announces the first fight, which in this case will be Himari Azuma from the 7th squad against Yachiho Azuma from the 6th squad, and when they face each other, Yachiho guarantees that he will drag his sister home after beating her. But Himari states that she is no longer the same as before, and so she presents Yuki's transformation as part of her ability, and once that is done, Gine tells them to start the first fight. Then Yachiho receives Yuki's first attack, but she goes back in time 5 seconds, and upon realizing that Yachiho is already tired, Himari realizes that she used her power to go back in time, and so she asks Yuki to maintain the same strategy as they agreed. In this they change tactics, but Yamada states that she will never defeat her. And then a scene before the fight begins, and Himari asks Sahara if her sister had made any preparations for that day's fight, and upon hearing this the girl says nothing and acts as though she doesn't understand. And upon realizing that the girl wasn't going to answer anything, Himari asks her again, and states that anything Sahara can tell her will be of great help. But the girl suddenly starts to sleep, and upon seeing this Himari screams at her, to wake up. Then Sahara wakes up and explains that Yachiho wasn't planning anything in particular, and besides that she was also very confident. And then Shu Shu tells Himari that her sister isn't expecting anything from this fight, so this is a clear advantage advantage for her, but instead,
said, Himari interprets her sister's contempt in the worst way possible. And upon returning to the moment of combat, Gine prepares the two for the moment of confrontation, and when ordering the two to start the battle, Yachiho states that his sister will not last a second fighting against her, but as soon as she says that, Yachiho ends up being hit by a blow from Yuki. And then she wonders where this sudden attack had come from, but she recovers herself and decides to act by undoing this attack, and to do so Yachiho uses his ability called Golden Hour, an ability that allows him to go back in time by 5 seconds. And as soon as she activates her ability during the battle, Himari immediately notices that her sister suddenly became very tired, and so she deduces that her sister has made use of her ability to go back in time right now. Then Himari moves on to her next plan, and explains that she had already planned something in advance in case they couldn't finish off Yachiho in the first attack, having said that she tells Yuki to maintain the strategy, and then he jumps on top of the enemy. And before being reached by her sister, Yachiho pulls out a weapon modified to be used in the woods, but Himari already knew that this would be her opponent's main weapon. And then Yachiho states that her sister's strategy is very flawed, after all, by jumping towards her she becomes an easy target, so she plans to attack her with golden hour as soon as Himari starts to descend. And when she reaches a certain height, Yuki takes his strength to his feet and gets an explosive impulse, and with that he manages to launch another attack on Yachiho, and she in turn uses the golden hour again to go back 5 seconds in time. Time. Once this is done, she notices her sister's strategy, which in this case is to use an aerial kick to gain momentum and be able to attack her, and then Yachiho recognizes his sister's good strategy, but she states that if she activates her ability, her ability will be more sooner than before, they will eventually move toward the range of your time freezing power. That said, she puts this plan into practice, and when she goes back in time 5 seconds, she activates her ability to freeze them both for 5 seconds, but when she does this, she notices that they are out of her field of vision. And when looking around, Yachiho spots them, and says that they are beyond the reach of her power, and with that she deduces that her sister is changing her tactics once again on purpose. And then she deactivates her ability and starts running towards them, and upon seeing her Himari notices that they were successful in making her waste her ability, having said that she tells Yuki to continue following the plan. And then he starts running quickly around Yachiho, and Gine comments that they are both faster than a speeding bullet, and all with the intention of confusing and stunning his opponent. And meanwhile Yuki feels the size of Himari's desire to beat her sister, and when commenting on this he remembers when she revealed her main goal in life, in this case, her goal was to be a hero just like her commander. But to begin with, Himari was determined to first become a new version of herself and defeat her sister, and remembering all this, Yuki is motivated to do her best to help her win. And then he starts running around Yachiho even faster, and when he finally attacks, the girl manages to dodge, however Yuki claims that the plan is still working, after all they manage to destabilize her as agreed. And meanwhile, Sahara notices that Yachiho's opponent came very well prepared, so she asks her colleague if Yachiho will be okay, and then the colleague notes that she was wrong in assuming that Yuki would only serve Q, after all he is serving Q. Himari before his eyes. And returning to the fight, Himari says that her servant is doing a lot for her, and more than expected, so she decides to apologize to him later for giving her such a difficult task to complete, but soon after she turns his attention back to the fight, and states that the fact that he is trying hard is just another reason why his sister must be defeated. Then Himari notices that her sister's golden hour ability cannot be activated instantly, and furthermore, when Yachiho activates this ability she strikes a strange pose. And depending on the position that Himari and Yuki are in while their sister starts to move, they may have an opening to attack or retreat, and to make the job even easier, they can know when she used this skill or or not, they just need to analyze it. Her behavior. In this case, if she gets tired out of nowhere, this is proof that Yachiho has gone back in time, and upon realizing this, their plan is to leave the place immediately, and by using the golden hour a few times, the girl will have the energy completely drained, and this leaves her unable to use this ability anytime soon. And then Himari says that her objective is to make her sister waste all her energy as much as possible, so that she will have a chance to defeat her, but Yachiho knows that she is thinking about it, and consequently she also discovered his strategy. Opponent, which in this case is to tire her as much as possible. And then Yachiho decides to use his best ability, called Prime Time, which allows him to freeze time for 10 seconds, and in doing so Yachiho explains that if he had stopped time for just 5 seconds, his sister would be out of time. It's 
reach, however, with this 10 second advantage she guarantees that Himari will not be able to escape her attack and when shooting at them, they both fall to the ground and then Yachiho explains to them that the prime time ability allows him to double the amount of time he spends. She can control and upon hearing this, Gine deduces that she has managed to stop time for 10 seconds, after all, the golden hour allows her to stop time for just 5 minutes. And then Yachiho goes towards his sister and boasts, saying that Himari underestimated her and that's why she ended up falling face down on the ground, and when he sees her not getting up Shushu raises the flag of the 7th squad and tells them both to get up. And meanwhile, Yachiho comments that when Himari's servant learns a skill that comes with an associated cost, he is unable to perform a skill switch until the price is paid, so Himari couldn't get up and simply make the skill switch. Skills in the middle of the fight. And then Yachiho suggests that his sister give up soon, so Yuki comments to Himari that her sister is as exhausted as they are, and because she used her ability so much she probably won't be able to use it again. And upon hearing this, Himari becomes excited about the fight again and decides to continue until the end, and upon seeing this turnaround occurring before her eyes Gine deduces that they are approaching the end of the fight. And then Yachiho says that continuing that fight will be shameful for her commander, and furthermore she states that she is capable of paralyzing time again if she wants. There Himari explains that remaining standing until the end during a fight is not a shameful attitude for the 7th squad, and when attacking her, Yachiho paralyzes time once again, but when trying to reach her sister, she does not find Himari. Nowhere. And then Yachiho shoots Yuki himself, but when her ability to stop time ends, Himari appears right under her and shoots her in the neck, causing Yachiho to fall to the ground in defeat. And with that, the entire squad 7 vi vibrates with joy, and Kyuka explains that by using Yuki's flash and smoke in her reverse transformation, they managed to blind the enemy, and then she states that they both did excellent teamwork. And after that, Himari explains to Yuki that he ended up fainting after being shot, and then Gine heals him, and says that now he's ready to move again. And as for Yachiho, she remembers when her sister caught a terrible cold just before the entrance exams, and all because she worked until her bones were tired. And after being cured, she decided decides to go to her sister and confess that she has in fact become much stronger, and then Yachiho asks if she would be willing to join the Azuma family again, and Himari replies no, because now the 7th squad and your new family. With that said, she leaves her sister behind without reacting, and as they move away from everyone, Himari remembers to give Yuki the reward, and meanwhile Azumo scolds Yachiho, and explains all the reasons that made her lose the fight. And finally, Izumo tells her never to underestimate an enemy, and as for the boy, she states that he is in fact an excellent slave, as he resisted until the end, serving as bait for the attack that would follow. And as for the other girls, they notice that Himari and Yuki are taking too long, and so Shu Shu decides to go through them, and will take the opportunity to hydrate, so Kyuka advises her not to drink too much water, after all the next fight will be hers. And meanwhile, Himari claims that without his help, she would never have defeated her sister, and then she reveals that she's not kissing him just to pay his reward. And in the middle of making out, Himari apologizes for having been a bit cruel to him at times, and at the end of the kiss she says again that this is just to reward him for his duty, so she tells him not to have any wrong ideas about respect for that. And even though she says these things to him, she goes back to kissing him even more, and then Shu Shu is left outside just listening to their entire conversation, and then she finds out what Himari meant by her ability to be physically demanding. And already in the arena, Sahara begins to stretch for the fight, and Yaku Yachiho apologizes to her for being defeated in her match, but when she realizes that the girl wasn't responding, she notices that Sahara was actually sleeping. And then the girl's colleague calls her, and so she finally wakes up, and just before they start the parade, three demons watch them attentively from afar. And when introducing the fighter Sin the second fight, Gine deduces that the battle between the two participants will be very intense, so Shu Shu tells Yuki to be careful during the battle, after all her objective is to beat her opponent with all her strength. And as for Yachiho, she is forced to be her team's cheerleader. After all this, the two opponents finally exchange their first words, and Shu Shu proposes that they leave their skills for last, after all they are very good, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then Sahara agrees to close this deal, so they start the fight, and after exchanging some attacks, Shu Shu is surprised with a German suplex, but gets back on her feet, and states that she won't be defeated so easily. However, Sahara says that she is already tired 
tired of the fight and asks them to use their skill soon but Shu Shu says that it is still too early for them to do that but still she accepts the girl's request. And then Shu Shu uses the paradigm shift skill to get bigger and Sahara praises this technique saying that it is awesome and then she decides to use her trump card too and activates her crazy sheep skill. She then lands a sharp slap on Shu Shu who falls to the ground at the same time. Gine explains that the skill that Sahara is using guarantees her a considerable increase in strength but it is only for a limited time chosen by the girl herself. However, the less time she chooses to keep the skill active, the stronger she becomes. However, when the skill ends, she needs to wait another three minutes to activate it again. And upon seeing this, Yachiho vibrates with excitement and states that Sahara did very well in this move. And then she lands another blow on Shu Shu and she explains that because the girl is a giant, it is easier to dodge her attacks. And on top of that, Shu Shu becomes an easy target at that size. And to prove her point, Sahara starts stoning her and then hits her squarely in the stomach, causing Shu Shu to fall down in a daze. And upon seeing this, Yuki worries about her, but the girl says that he doesn't need to be so worried about her. And meanwhile, Sahara makes fun of the whole situation and asks if Shu Shu would be thinking about giving up. Then Shu Shu says that she will not give up at the beginning of the match, and as she says this, she feels an inexplicable determination coming from her. And then Shu Shu has a memory from high school where some friends commented on the importance of dating. And one of them explains that she is never bored with her boyfriend, and in addition, she states that seeing the expression of joy on the face of the one she loves is something that makes her very happy, and Shu Shu says that she has no interest in anything. Have a romantic partner, after all she wants to have a more exciting life. And then she explains that she is interested in joining a forest force, because this way she will never feel bored, after all, in her mind every day would be a total explosion of newness, and although her friends don't understand her, they both want Mei Shu Shu get what he wants. Then she finally gets up and asks Yuki to carefully observe her victory and upon seeing her trying to fight at that size, Sahara advises the girl to become a little smaller but Shu Shu refuses to adapt to win and instead decreases, it increases its size even more. Once this is done, she throws herself into Sahara but before being completely crushed she manages to hold Shu Shu's body but she is soon captured and then Sahara is thrown against the ground at full speed and after that, Shu Shu shrinks back in size a little, and then she asks Gine to see if her opponent still has consciousness after receiving this attack. Then she goes to Sahara and begins the elimination count, but the girl manages to get up quickly, and upon seeing this, Yachiho gets excited and explains that when she becomes unconscious with her active ability, Sahara's body becomes controlled only by his killer instincts. And then she attacks Shu Shu, leaving her unconscious, and Gine starts counting, and in the end, Sahara manages to win the match, and when she wakes up, Shu Shu apologizes to the commander for having lost the match. But Kyuka says that she almost won, so they can discuss later about where she should improve, so Himari advises her to go change for now, and on the way, Shu Shu feels like a failure, and to make matters worse, she still lost at the front. From Yuki, and upon noticing her so shaken, he goes to her to ask the girl for a drink, but Shu Shu says she doesn't need any of that, and then Yuki is willing to help her with anything else she needs, after all he is the their caretaker. Then Shu Shu asks him to erase everything that happened from his memory, but Yuki says that she didn't do anything wrong that needs to be erased, because the wrestling techniques she used at the beginning of the battle left him very excited and with wanting to see more. And then Shu Shu explains that he just couldn't see more of her wrestling techniques because Sahara decided to use skills too early, and as they remain silent for a moment, she asks him to close his eyes for a second. And as she does that, she comes out of the room and kisses him, and then he asks why she did it so suddenly, and Shu Shu says that he wants to forget the shock of losing the fight with an even bigger shock, and to achieve that, she needed to kiss him. And when giving this lame excuse, Shu Shu notes that she cannot reveal her real feelings for him yet, as she still needs to make him like her even a little, and in the meantime, an EI begins to analyze the bush in search of any abnormalities, until she finally finds two suspicious people, and soon after they are surprised by several Shuki coming out of the earth, but Gine guarantees that they will not pass through her impenetrable barrier. But as soon as she says that, a humanoid being manages to calmly crack her barrier, and with all this imminent chaos, Kyuka cancels the exhibition show. The humanoid states that they should have been extinct a long time ago, but Kyuka raises her sword and is ready to face that being, and then the other girls attack the other Shuki. Then Shu Shu goes to fight too, 
and then Sahara is willing to provide support in the fight and as for Himari she tries to attack the humanoid but he defends himself and throws his thunder magic at her but before the attack hit her Yachiho saves his sister and then Himari leaves the place and then Yachiho promises revenge against the humanoid and meanwhile Himari goes to the commander and asks to ride Yuki with her at the same time and although they never tried before that Kyuka immediately agrees to put this idea into practice and asks Yuki to trust her and while they perform the ritual with the two Kyuka deduces that with two masters he will take on an even more powerful form and upon finishing his new transformation Kyuka asks Yuki what he thinks of his new powers and he just states that he is able to feel it running through his veins and then he intends to do that same movement of channeling his energy into a specific point once this is done he attacks the enemy with a technique called howling explosion which consists of firing a flame ball at his opponent Himari is impressed with all the power he achieved by bringing together two masters and Kyuka guarantees that with that power they will be able to annihilate the entire swarm of Shuki more easily but Himari asks about her sister's safety and then the commander reassures her and says that Yachiho will be fine in the care of the sixth squad and meanwhile the commander of the sixth squad learns about the existence of two additional humanoids there and so NEI explains that she is not able to see them but she is sure that they are in the bush and just by collecting this information the commander says goodbye and goes to the combat area to fight too after all she doesn't want to be overshadowed by the other commander and as for Kyuka she claims that she will put on a much better show than the exhibition matches that will occur until then and meanwhile one of the commander's colleagues complains to NEI about not being able to see her master in action but NEI tells her to touch her so the girl will be able to watch everything and in doing so she is enchanted by this very convenient ability and returning to the fight Kyuka continues annihilating the Shuki present whereupon the girl next to NEI explains that generally the Shuki cannot be defeated with common weapons however weapons specially made with the power of peaches are the only weapons that can defeat these types of monsters with the exception of Kyuka's weapon and so the girl explains that the commander trained on top of a sacred mountain and so she he was able to perfect his own combat style capable of destroying the Shuki without needing his peach ability and the girl claims that because she has these exceptional skills Kyuka ended up getting the position of commander and meanwhile Yachiho uses his golden hour skill to dodge yet another attack from the humanoid but when dodging many blows Yachiho starts to get tired and states that these humanoids actually have impressive firepower until she ends up having her arm ripped off whereupon the humanoid states that she will not be able to do the pose of the his ability without a limb however Yachiho activates her ability with a different pose and goes back in time five seconds in which she manages to escape his attack and then the humanoid gets tired and calls her an insistent pest then he activates a blast of magic that heats her body and then he claims that he will kill her in his next attack but before he can launch his attack the commander of the sixth squad goes there and when he sees her the humanoid wonders where that mysterious woman appeared from so she proposes to exchange places with Yachiho after all the girl has already fought enough and needs to rest however the humanoid states that they will not have a minute of respite as his army is fighting now however the commander states that she has already neutralized all the shuki they had so they will not be able to interfere in the fight and when looking around the humanoid notices that she is in fact telling the truth and the commander informs that she already knows about the existence of two other official level humanoids there however she is willing to start by eliminating him first and when he sees that she is really powerful he says he will have a lot of fun with this fight and when they were surprised by countless Shuki, Kyuka decides to act by destroying the main monster of the group, and meanwhile, the commander of the sixth squad continues the battle against one of the giant monsters, and upon defeating her so easily, he disdains her as a commander, and says that he would only expect this mediocre performance from a plague, but as soon as he says that, she appears behind him and tries to kick him, but the monster dodges, and states that she won't get anything out of it, after all her flesh is as strong as steel, but as the fight continues, Tenka finally manages to hit him, and upon seeing this, Gine vibrates with excitement, and explains that both commanders have devised a plan to finish off the two humanoids in the blink of an eye. And meanwhile, the humanoid injured by Tenka becomes enraged, and claims that he will blow her into a thousand pieces, and when firing his attack, he becomes all confident, and states that she will need a lot of luck to survive this. But when all the dust dissipates, Tenka remains standing, so she goes to him, and teleports him 
him up and then Gine explains that Commander Tenka has the divine ability to manipulate the space around her and because it is an ability so incredible she also has an appropriate name in this case it would be Aim Nomatori. And when applying his ability to the humanoid he is swallowed by a kind of black hole and explodes. Tenka explains that if she tears the fabric of space his enemy's defenses will no longer be as useful. And upon witnessing this scene Yuki notices that a whole swarm of Shuki have disappeared and Himari explains that all commanders are like that as they are always on a different level than the others. And then Yuki remembers about Kyuka aiming to be the supreme commander in charge of all the other commanders and for him this goal is indeed something very ambitious but upon hearing this Kyuka states that she will be the next supreme commander no matter what the cost. That said she tells all the girls to finish kicking the intruders out and then Yuki is excited to help too and claims that he will be a bush hero. And upon returning home Kyuka reports that they managed to defeat Shuki's army but still according to Nei's report there are still other enemy generals present. But Himari comments that they didn't have any sign of these other enemies even though they searched a lot so Shu Shu deduces that they may have been killed with the last big explosion they caused but Tenka says he's not so sure about that after all those humanoids were very peculiar. And as for NEI she apologizes to everyone because even though she has the power of prediction she ended up detecting the enemy too late. Kyuka reassures her and explains that the enemies probably have some camouflage ability. Furthermore Tenka states that the girl was able to detect enemies before they attacked which ended up making it impossible for them to carry out an ambush. And in addition to praising her Tenka also gives due credit to Yuki's performance but the boy smiles awkwardly and says that she was much more impressive than him and then Gine goes to him and states that his performance was brilliant. Therefore this proves that boys can also be very talented. That said she asks him for an autograph and meanwhile Himari talks to her sister about the moment she saved her and thanks her for Yachiho's help at which point the girl is embarrassed and says he only saved her because she is a member of the Azuma family and if Himari were defeated by the enemy it would bring shame to the entire family. And then she again tries to drag Himari returns to the house but Himari says again that Squad 7 is her new home and family and meanwhile the commanders comment on the exhibition game and Tenka says that they are tied for now. With that said Tenka and his girls leave the place and Yuki says that he will need to take a shower and rest after all the effort made in the fights but before that the girls remember to give him his reward and start taking off their clothes. Then Kyuka tells him to do the same, so the three of them go to the bath together, and when soaping it, Himari notices that they are practically bathing an obedient dog, so there is no reason for them to be ashamed of doing this. And then Kyuka clings to his back, and notices that the boy appears to be more tired than usual, and he explains that having been controlled by two masters at the same time took a lot out of his performance. In this Himari says that this makes him stronger, but she states that his abilities should not be used lightly and Kyuka comments that thanks to this they learn to use the slave in a practical way and later on they will need to continue exploring its potential. But for now she tells Yuki to rest and after the bath Nei makes a portrait of the enemies she spotted in the bush and then Himari informs her that headquarters will make an official composite sketch for those portraits later. And as for Kyuka she notices that none of the humanoids portrayed are the same as the ones they encountered last time and as she thinks more about it Yuki wonders why her sister wasn't with those other humanoids so he deduces that the humanoids they are also organized into different teams and when he thinks a lot about this situation he ends up falling asleep so Tenka goes to him and watches him sleeping and the next day Yuki and the girls go to the sixth squad's dormitory and then he notices that all the dormitories appear to be the same thing on the outside in this Himari states that most of them are similar however they change inside and when they are received by Tenka she asks if they had any setbacks on the way and Kyuka informs that she needed to take down some Shuki but that's it. And when they arrive at a specific location Kyuka asks Himari and Yuki to walk around the dormitory as now she will have a meeting with Tenka and it needs to be alone. And in addition Yuki is tasked with being the caretaker of that dormitory for now as their caretaker left as well as the other girls there in which he is willing to help and explains that as they are part of the demonic defense force they must protect each other. That said he decides to start cleaning the place but when walking around the dormitory Yuki notices that the place is already very clean and so he gathers the clothes to wash them but when looking at the girl's underwear he he's already blushing. However Yuki tries to calm down and remembers that he is already used to washing the 7th squad
squad's clothes all the time, so he shouldn't have any problems washing the clothes there too. But still, he notices that he is still nervous, and meanwhile, Shu Shu wonders what the boy is doing now, and seeing that he is thinking too much about him, she decides to put it aside, and notes that it will be much more productive if she focuses on her self-improvement. And returning to the sixth squad, Yuki goes to Yachiho's room, and then he becomes anxious, and wonders what will happen if she sees him, so the boy decides to knock on the door before entering to see if anyone is there. But when you notice that no one is responding, he enters the room, and Yuki notices several paintings of Himari spread throughout the room, and then he just leaves a box in place and runs out in despair. And on the way, he finds Sahara sleeping on the sofa in the living room out of nowhere, and upon seeing her uncovered, Yuki tries to cover her to prevent the girl from catching a cold, but before Sahara sleepwalks and holds the boy to her breasts, then Yuki feels that he must get out of that situation before someone sees him and thinks something wrong but she traps him with her legs, and says that he won't go anywhere, and then Yuki remembers that Sahara has the same strength as a professional, so it will be very difficult for him to let go of her, and after trying a lot, he just gives up, and after that, she finally wakes up, and says that she had forgotten about the visit they were going to make, and as they walk a little further, the two meet Himari, and the girl explains that she is waiting for your sister to finish training so they can talk, and upon noticing all of Yachiho's effort, Himari asks if she always trains like this, Sahara informs her that the girl trained with that same intensity before the exhibition match. That said, she asks if Himari admires her sister. And Himari states that her sister's personality is chaos, but still, she does well academically and athletically, to which Sahara says she has a theory about someone's peach ability being based on their nature and knowledge. And in Himari's case, her ability is based on her desire to learn from Yachiho, and this also applies to Yachiho's ability to control time as her desire is to spend more time with her younger sister. But upon hearing this, Himari claims that Sahara is exaggerating in her deductions, but the girl continues with her opinion, and says that Himari should try to talk to her sister more often. Then Yuki enters the conversation, and says that her older sister is very cool, and then she goes to Yachiho to hand her a cloth to dry her face, in which the girl already demonstrates all her chaotic personality, and just takes the cloth from her, her sister's hand without saying anything. And meanwhile, Kyuka continues the meeting with Tenka, and she informs him that there has been no movement from the humanoids since the last attack, and with that she decides to take the first step instead of waiting for them to act. So she decides to start investigating the place where she had her first contact with a humanoid, and Tenka says she is very eager to find out how many of these humanoids are out there. And as for the humanoid she would have defeated, Tenka states that she cannot say for sure whether he was killed or not, after all she felt a different vibration in the air at that moment. And then the humanoid Ryren, who was supposed to be dead, finally manages to recover, in which a girl present remembers when she saved him from Tenka's attack, thus making her think he was dead. And then she boasts, and states that he is lucky to have her, but Ryren says that he could continue fighting alone, but the girl informs him that the battle was already lost the moment he let the enemy destroy his army. That said, she explains that she evaluated the enemy's capabilities when fighting the third squad, as her goal was to get a first-hand sense of the commander's strength and because of this, she claims that Ryren failed miserably in deducing that they could defeat them with your current strength. But upon hearing this, he assures that these individuals can still be defeated, but Juryu says that Shikoku is right in what he says, unlike him. That said, the girl explains that they should only attack again when they manage to gather the necessary eight people. And as they talk a little more about it, Juryu notices that Shikoku is very interested in humans for some reason, and meanwhile, Meanwhile, Kyuka and Tenka's meeting comes to an end, but before leaving, the commander of the 6th squad asks to stay with their slave, in this case, Yuki. And meanwhile, Tenka follows trying to acquire Yuki for the 6th squad, as she needs a pet to help her with her work. And she states that if Kyuka accepts her request, she will support her in the next election of Supreme Commander, but Kyuka states that she will become Supreme Commander without needing anyone's help. With that said, she ends the meeting, and upon meeting Yuki, she informs him that Tenka wants him as her pet, so that she has a companion by her side. However, he states that he is already busy being the caretaker of the 7th squad, so this negotiation 
negotiation with Tenka will not happen. Kyuka explains that the seventh squad indeed needs him, but she makes it clear that she has no control over his personal life. And upon returning to the dormitory, Yuki thinks about this proposal, but he discards it, as his goal is to become a hero, not a madam's dog. Then a portal opens in her room, and Tenka comes out of it, and as soon as she approaches him, she makes her intentions clear, and states that she wants to have a serious relationship with him as boyfriend and girlfriend. But upon hearing this, he questions why she referred to him as pet, and Tenka explains that this is just a figure of speech to describe how adorable he is. And she also states that his obedience to his master is also something that captivated her a lot. In addition, Tenka also praises his impressive cleaning skills. Then she starts to touch him, and when she kisses him, she feels her heart race, and says she has never felt anything like that before. And to heat everything up even more, Tenka starts taking off her clothes, and explains that she was thinking about doing that with him in another context, but she says she won't resist any longer. And when faced with this scene unfolding so quickly, Yuki begins to despair, and Tenka asks if the shirt he is wearing is something very important to him. And he says that it's just an old, cheap shirt, so Tenka disappears with the boy's shirt in the blink of an eye, and then Yuki warns that she's abusing her ability too much. In this case, she asks for answers about what she had asked him, in this case, Tenka wants to know if he will go with her or not, and to make it easier for her to give him three options, accept the proposal, say that she will think about it later or refuse it, and then he says that he takes the second option, so he will reflect on her proposal and give her the answer only later. Tenka understands this, after all that proposal was very sudden, so it's natural that he doesn't accept it right away. However, she says she is satisfied that he didn't refuse her, and Tenka says that she will think of something to prevent him from slipping out of her hands, and suddenly Shu Shu enters his room asking him to play video games. And then she ends up witnessing the whole scene, where the two are taken to the room, and Kyuka is informed about Tika attacking Yuki out of nowhere, and although she said she wouldn't interfere in his personal life, she tells him not to abuse him too much. And Shu Shu claims that entering another squad's dorm in the middle of the night to do this is completely disrespectful, regardless of the circumstances. Furthermore, she states that none of them should abuse their abilities, with that said Kyuka tells Tenka to return to her house soon, but before that she goes to Yuki for the last time that night, and says that she will see him later. And when she finally leaves the room, Yuki states that all this confusion has left him very exhausted, and so Kyuka sends him to do a morning workout the next day, and without delay. And when it's time for training, Kyuka explains which will prepare them for the battle they will have against the humanoid Shuki, and for this she is willing to lend her slave skills to the girls. Because with this they will be able to ride Yuki in his slave form, and Kyuka deduces that his attributes change depending on who is riding him. And upon hearing this, Himari agrees with this theory, after all Yuki was very different when she was controlling him. In addition Kyuka believes that depending on the attributes, this would expand the list of strategies, tools, and techniques available for them to use. And to do the first test, she tells an EI to try to mount Yuki, but she feels bad about having to climb on him, but Yuki claims that she doesn't mind, saying that she climbs up, and when holding the chains, he changes into a form different. Then Kyuka asks him what he thinks of this new version of his body, but Yuki states that he will need to move before drawing his final conclusions, and when he does, he states that he doesn't feel as strong as before, but on the other hand, your senses are much sharper now, such as your vision and hearing. And then he decides to channel his energy just into his eyes, to test and see what happens, but in doing so, he starts to see under the girl's clothes, and Yuki starts to apologize out of nowhere, leaving them without understanding what is happening. Until Himari realizes what is happening, and tells him to look in another direction, Kyuka feels that they can use this X-ray vision ability to their advantage, as they can use it to sniff out the hidden Shuki. However, she remembers the high price these skills take, after all, unlike Himari, when Kyuka lends her skill, it weakens a considerable amount of her strength. And meanwhile, Yuki returns to normal, and Nei kisses him on the cheek as a way of rewarding him for his good work, but then she apologizes and says that her body moved and did it all by itself. And then Kyuka notices that the person responsible for paying Yuki's reward is the person writing him, not her, and Kyuka apologizes, as she thought she was the one who would pay the slave's reward. And then Shu Shu decides to be the next to test the different forms of the 
the slave's skill. But upon hearing this, Kyuka explains that perhaps her reward is higher than Nei's, so Shu Shu begins to think about a reward far beyond that. However, this motivates her even more to test him, but gives the excuse that she is more concerned with exterminating the Shuki, so having to give a silly reward is no big deal, and when she gets on top of him, everyone notices Shu Shu's confidence. And then Yuki takes on a new form, and says that he is able to feel enormous strength in his body, however he also feels that he is slower compared to his previous form. At this Kyuka admits that he is indeed very powerful, but she states that it is not worth lending her skill to obtain such a simple upgrade. And then Shu Shu begins to despair, and to avoid being discarded she states that there is a good chance that Yuki will become big too, if she uses her growth ability. That said, she activates the paradigm shift skill, but Yuki remains the same size, and after that, Kyuka decides to prioritize only Nei's attributes for now. And speaking of her, her cell phone alarm rings, warning her that she must go to school, and Yuki wonders why she joined the demonic defense force in the first place. And when the girl finishes getting redder, he is willing to accompany her to school, but before that Kyuka gives him a pass reserved for members of the demonic defense force, so that he can enter the place without any problems. And on the way, Nei apologizes to him, as he knows that Yuki is always busy, but he tells her not to worry about it. And when they return to the topic involving her joining the demon defense force, Yuki states that it must be difficult to go to school while working for the organization at the same time. But Nei explains that not having school every day helps, besides, she faithfully believes in the cause of the demonic defense force, because fighting alongside them, Nei has a better chance of finding her parents. And then she explains that when they disappeared, many clues were left behind, and everyone suggested that her parents' disappearance had to do with some accident in the woods. In this she also comments on the rumor of people receiving phone calls from relatives who supposedly disappeared in Mado. And then Yuki states that she has already heard some stories involving things like that, and Nei continues her explanation, and says that by eating a peach, she gained her clairvoyant powers, and she believes that her feelings influenced the final form of her ability, having said all this she states that she will find her parents one day, and Yuki motivates her, saying that she will achieve this, because like her, he also lost his your sister somewhere in the woods. And meanwhile, Tenka informs that the Supreme Commander warned them not to do anything with the humanoid Shuki, as she is the one who will give the orders on what should be done. From this, Tenka deduces that the commander's objective is to establish some type of dialogue with the humanoids, so that she can assess how intelligent they are. And Kyuka states that they are the type to attack first and never ask questions about anything, and Tenka says that if everything goes as planned, the commander will trust them to solve the mysteries of the bush, put an end to the Shuki problem and prevent more accidents. Of bush. And as for the dialogue with the Shuki, Kyuka believes that they will not answer any questions and Tenka states that any words they exchange will evolve into a battle anyway. And after this conversation, Tenka returns to Squad 7, and when Yuki goes to get a glass to pour him water, she starts teasing him again, and then Nei feels like he shouldn't be seeing this scene. And suddenly an alarm rings, Himari informs that numerous gateways appeared during her patrol, and then Kyuka calls Yuki to go to the location. And once there, Tenka offers to help, but Kyuka tells her to stay out of it, as that area is under the jurisdiction of the seventh squad. And when he transforms into his slave version, Kyuka mounts him, and states that he will no longer receive flattery from another commander, after all he belongs only to her. With that said, they go on the attack, and as for Himari, she is attacked by a new species of Shuki, but is soon saved by Shu Shu, and when Yuki tries to attack him, he notices that the enemy's skin is very tough, in addition to the but it regenerates at the speed of light. And then he attacks Shuki with the ability, Mighty Blade Cross, and and meanwhile, the two humanoids responsible for this mess talk to each other, and the main leader of all this notices that an enlarged Shuki is not as efficient in practice, therefore she decides to think about what she will do next. And as for Yuki, he tells Kyuka that he was very excited when he received that scolding from her at the beginning of the fight, and that helped him fight with more determination. Then Tenka leaves the place, and feels that not being able to have Yuki only makes her want him more.
And after cleaning the Shuki area, Kyuka celebrates the victory, but another Shuki appears, but is soon finished off by Yuki. In this she praises his quick perception, and so Yuki takes this compliment as a sign that he is becoming increasingly stronger. And for him, Yuki can become so strong to the point of protecting Kyuka, and speaking of her, the commander asks which, it will be the type of reward he will ask for for the fight. And when she notices him holding her in his lap, Kyuka explains that this is a reward, which makes more sense for any eye to provide, after all, it makes no sense for him to keep holding her. However, Yuki states that she is fine with receiving this reward from her too, and upon returning to the dorm, the girls praise her. Yuki's recent performance, but upon hearing so many compliments he claims that they are exaggerating, and Tenka notices him blushing, and says he looks even cuter this way. And then Shushu tells the commander to get off Yuki, and go back to her dorm, but Tenka ignores the girl, and continues, caressing the boy and asks if he was always so talented. Yuki explains that his older sister taught him a lot, thing when he was young. And upon hearing this, Tenka becomes interested in knowing more about the girl, and then he has a memory where a boy complains about being always ignored by Yuki. Then the man who accompanied the boy asks Yuki to be more gentle with the boy, and in the middle, out of all this confusion, his sister appears, and tells the man to take his hands off his brother, but instead of listening to her, he goes after her, of the girl, but is easily defeated. And as for Yuki, he submits the other boy, and says he learned two martial arts moves while playing a fighting game. And when she sees him acting with courage, she hugs her brother, and says that it deserves a celebration, so they will buy some treats to eat later. Having said all that, Tenka notes that his sister was apparently very good, and Kyuka claims that she was training him without even knowing it. Yuki notices, and after talking, she tells Yuki to take the rest of the night off, and asks Tenka to go back to her dorm. At this, Inii says she is jealous that he has an older sister, and in the middle of the conversation, she detects someone in danger, and so Kyuka tells Himari and Shushu to go to the place, and when Himari gets there, she finishes off the Shuki in the same instant, and when she sees how the little girl being chased is doing, she simply punches Himari, and explains that she took some of the demonic defense force, so she will use all that power to make them suffer, and the Shushu notices that that girl is more of a humanoid, and as for Himari, she says that she defended the punch in time to be hit, and then the humanoid praises Himari's reflexes, but summons some more Shuki to help her in combat, and Himari remembers the girl's name, and calls her Coconut, and upon hearing this, she is amazed, as she doesn't know how the girl could have discovered her name. So Shushu explains that she, she said her own name during the fight. And then Himari changes the subject, and informs that the supreme commander of the demonic defense force is willing to negotiate with the humanoids. However, Koko rules out negotiating with them, as his objective is to crush them. And meanwhile, Yuki notices his body full of cuts and bruises, and soon associates this with the fact that they are fighting against the Shukis very often. And although he is very injured, he has also gained more muscle after all these battles. And while she admires herself in the mirror, Koko enters the bathroom with any eye without warning, and informs her that they are under attack. And meanwhile, Himari continues shooting at the enemies, but notices that her bullets aren't enough to stop them. So Coconut explains that the armor his Kuma is very resistant, but Himari states that he is also capable of adapting. And as she says this she attacks Koko with even greater power, but she dodges and attacks Himari. And as for Shushu, she is attacked by another humanoid. But Kyuka finally arrives at the location, and upon seeing the humanoid, Yuki immediately remembers her. And then he continues heading towards the target, whereupon the humanoid tells him to stop moving so much, and he promptly obeys. Then she arrests him, and when Kyuka manages to take off his restraints, she notices that Yuki has disappeared. Appeared. From this she deduces that he should have been the target of the humanoids from the beginning, and upon hearing this Himari understands why the other humanoids appeared, only to retreat. After all, their objective from the beginning was to capture Yuki. And then she suggests going back to the dorm, whereupon Kyuka notes that Shushu's wounds need medical attention before she comes back. Fighting, and meanwhile, Yuki wakes up after dreaming about his sister, and when he notices Coconut on top of him, Yuki gets scared. But the another humanoid asks him to try to calm down, and then Koko licks him again, and assures him that he will be fine in a short time. And in the middle of all this he remembers that he ended up being captured, and when thinking more about the fight, Yuki remembers that when the humanoid screamed, he simply obeyed, and this confirms in one way. Once and for all that humanoid is his sister, then he starts to move, and then Koko asks him to stay still, but suddenly, his sister arrives in the room, and soon punishes Koko for undressing her brother. However, another humanoid claims that she is being unfair. After all, Yuki was already undressed when her transformation reached the end, end and as he had numerous injuries, Koko decided to heal him with his saliva, and upon hearing this, Yuki realizes that his wounds, in fact they are gone, and then Koko explains that their saliva has medicinal properties, and when he sees his sister interacting with the girl, he immediately recognizes her personality, so she hugs him, and Yuki is relieved, upon discovering that she was actually alive this whole time, and then she states that he won't get rid of her that easily, in which the humanoids around her move to witness the love between brothers before their eyes, and then Yuki takes advantage, and asks why her sister has become a humanoid, but before that she makes fun of him for being naked, and gives him some clothes for him to wear, after all she wants to take him for a walk outside, so he will find out where he is, and what, she and her like her indeed, with that said they go outside, and she introduces him to the place as a hidden village, and as there are no peach trees in the area, the defense force. Demonic woman doesn't appear there, so he notices that there are several other people who look like his sister there, and then she informs him that there are around 20 people living in that village. Coco then starts introducing herself, while the girl next door introduces herself as Yuno, and Yuki asks if Shukis used to be human, but her sister says no, so Yuno explains that unlike the Shuki who are pure-blooded monsters, they are half-human and half-monster. And then Yuki's sister states that they only ended up like this due to an accident, but their souls are still human. That said, she asks Yuki to live there with her, so he won't have to worry about being a slave anymore. So he asks her, slow down, and stay 
states that she doesn't need to hide there. After all, she's still a human, and then he assures her that she will have protection from demonic defense if it explains the situation. But upon hearing this, Coco states that they don't treat this possibility as an option, as the demonic defense force is the enemy of humanoids. Furthermore, Yuno reminds him that they enslaved Yuki, so all these issues combined make them against this organization, and that Yuki notice that friendly expression changing on their faces. And meanwhile, Himari tends to Shushu's injuries, and says that she will be fine soon. But the girl claims that she is more worried about Yuki now, and as for NEI, she returns to the dormitory after asking for help from the other squads to look for Yuki, but she is willing to expand your search further on your own. And as for the commander, she has been in her room since they returned to the dorm, and then Himari explains that she is under orders from the Supreme Commander, therefore she is not authorized to attack the humanoids yet. And upon hearing this, Shushu understands the situation, but states that Yuki is in danger. But Himari states that the fact that they kidnapped him means that they have some objective in mind. In addition, Himari guarantees that the commander will think of something to rescue Yuki. And meanwhile, Kyuka remembers the moment when Yuki obeyed the humanoid's order, and speaking of him, Yuki finds himself cornered by the girls. And then he asks his sister how she knew he was in the woods, and she explains that she is able to feel the presence of her younger brother. In this, she returns to venerating the fact that he has grown so much in such a short time. And then the two other humanoids agree with her about Yuki being very beautiful. And in the middle of all this, his stomach starts to growl, so his sister goes out to get him something to eat. And when he finds himself alone with Yuno and Coconut, he, he asks if it's very difficult to work with his sister, and Yuno says yes, but assures him that everyone really likes Aoba, including his flaws, in which he goes to Coconut, and she presents him with a hallucinogenic mushroom, which makes him mistake Yuno's breast for meat buns. But when she actually arrives, Aoba once again notices her brother bossing her friends around. And meanwhile, Kyuka tells the girls to get ready to leave, as her body has started to move unconsciously, which means she is. It's time for her to give Yuki the reward, and as a consequence of that, she will move towards him. And returning to the humanoid village, Yuki notices his sister holding a peach bush, and then he deduces that Aoba's powers have some connection with the peaches, in which she explains that it was the peaches that made her and her friends turn into humanoids. And then Yuki asks to listen the full story of how this happened. And in the meantime, Kyuka tells Nei to stay in the dorm, and then the entire squad six is willing to help them in the search for Yuki. And in a conversation with Aoba, Yuki notices that she has a wild peach in her hand, and then he asks if she got to eat it at that time, in which Aoba explains that it takes a lot of procedure to do this. And what's more, there are those who don't eat peaches. But Yuki notices that in her case, her power came from the peach, and she explains that this is in fact true. After all, it was the peaches that turned her into who she is today. And upon hearing this, Yuki asks her to talk more about this subject, and this your sister and the other humanoid come to them, and are ready to tell him the whole story he wants to know. And then Aoba asks if she is sure. After all, this is a traumatic story for her, but Yuno is willing to tell everything. Even so, and the story begins with her working normally in the other world as a model, but on a certain day she ended up being caught in an accident in the woods, but Yuno had not yet eaten the peach at that time. And then she felt that she could remain young and beautiful if she ate that fruit, so she simply took it and ate it, and so the peach's power went out of control, causing her to end up blacking out. And then Yuno woke up in a room, dark, and when looking ahead, she notices a mysterious lady staring at her. In this case, the lady tells her everything that was happening. In this case, Yuno was in the Inyang dormitory, a center of research to study the Shuki, and when she finds herself in that random environment, she becomes confused and wonders why she is there. However, this doubt is resolved from the moment she looks at her hand and notices that she is transforming into a monster. Also, in this the lady explains that this type of accident does not usually happen in her world, so she deduces that Yuno has been infected by the bush miasma. However, she says she will still need to do more research to understand what is happening, and as Yuno is the best guinea pig for this experiment, the lady asks the girl to collaborate with the research. But upon hearing this, Yuno states that she does not intend to be used as a guinea pig, as her desire is to be cured, so that she can, can return to the beauty it had before. In this, the lady explains that she may be able to cure it as research progresses. Moving forward, but until then, she asks Yuno to cooperate with her, as this is for the good of humanity. And then Yuno explains to Yuki that his body was used for studies, and even though he went through all that, Yuno states that, also got something good from it. In this case, she awakened the ability to pass objectives, and by achieving this, she just, he waited for an opportunity and fled the scene with his friends. That said, Yuno claims that the history of most humans humanoids was like this, but Aoba explains that in her case there was a difference, as she suffered much more from the symptoms of the transformation, and upon finding that place, Aoba fought to maintain her feelings, their human senses intact, and after finally coming to his senses, Aoba ended up meeting her two friends, and upon hearing the whole story, Yuki says that they really suffered a lot, Aoba says that the darkness of the forest is actually much deeper than he thought, and as for Yuki, he suggests going to inform all this to the others, but Aoba states that this is useless, after all the in dormitory, Yang believes that the bush is beneficial to the nation, and then the humanoid next door states that that the way is for them to invade the Inyang dormitory and destroy everything, and then say all the other humanoids who are going through the same situation as them. And in the middle of it all, three Shuki show up there, and Yuno introduces one of them as Kadamura. And furthermore, it informs that these three Shuki are stronger than normal Shuki. Having said all that, she claims that the her forces are already ready and have already established attack routes. So Yuki says she understands what makes her want to act like this. However, he claims that this attack will cause many innocent victims. Furthermore, if the demonic defense force knows about this, they will certainly take action. But Aoba claims that the Supreme Command of the demonic defense force already knows about the Inyang dormitory, but Yuki is still worried about their safety. However, Aoba 
Zelda states that they will find a way to heal regardless of who hits them. That being said, they prepare to begin making their warlike moves. And meanwhile, Squad 7 continues the searches for Yuki, and then Kyuka notices that her body is automatically moving to a specific location. So she deduces that the humanoids are probably keeping Yuki hidden in that place. And then she tells the Tenka that they must enter the place, but she tells them all to act quickly, as the only objective is rescue Yuki. But Yachiho asks what should be done if a humanoid intercepts them, and Kyuka states that they must try to dialogue with the enemy, just as the Supreme Commander ordered. However, if the humanoids do not show interest in dialoguing, they may enter into combat, whereupon a Shuki appears. Suddenly, but Yachiho takes care of the threat quickly, and says that they should just focus on rescuing Yuki for now, and then. Shushu destroys the cave, but one of the humanoids comes out with the Kuma. But she is quickly restrained by Shushu, who tells Kyuka and the others to go look for Yuki, and already in the cave, Kyuka notes that that cave is very different from the one the visiting teams are exploring, and Yachiho explains that besides the place being narrower, there are no peaches, and in the middle of the way they are blocked by more Shuki, and then Kyuka and Tinka follow in towards Yuki, and leaves Yachiho and his sister behind. And then, she finally finds Yuki, and quickly manages to catch him with Tinka's teleportation ability, in which they go to another place to hide. And then, Tinka asks if they did something to him all this time, but Yuki says it's okay. What about Kyuka? She decides to deliver his reward soon, so that she can move freely again, but Tinka does the same himself, and says that he is just rewarding him for his hard work, just like Kyuka herself. But in the middle of the reward, they are surprised by Aoba, who decides to attack them, but Yuki enters the middle, and explains to the girls. Girls that humanoid is his sister, so Aoba tells him to get out of his way, but he insists on it, and asks her, listen to him, and then she decides to give Yuki space to speak, and the boy says he will tell him about what made his sister like that, and in the meantime, Nei prepares the food and takes care of the organization of the dormitory, and now Sahara and Chuchu, the two continue fighting against one of the humanoids, until Sahara ends up getting the worst of it, and then the humanoid states that if they just keep running away, the fight will be very boring. However, Sahara asks the humanoid again just listen to them, but she still just wants to fight, and meanwhile, Imari and Yachiho also remain in the fight against the Shuki, and Yachiho tells his sister to stay on his tail, as she will protect her, and as for Yuki, he finishes telling his sister's entire story, and then Kyuka deduces that the best decision to make is, destroy the Inyang dormitory, and Aoba agrees with the idea, but makes it clear that he will continue using the Shuki to cause a revolt, and then Kyuka states, that doing things this way will result in many victims, but Aoba says that she is already a victim, so she doesn't, you will be doing nothing wrong, and this Yuki asks his sister to trust Kyuka, after all she is a superior, but Aoba explains that he is being treated, like a slave, and on top of that she even put a chain on him, so Yuki states that she decided to do things like this, way on his own, after all he needs to become a slave to be a hero, and even hearing all this, Aoba states that she won't change her mind, because she is doing all that for her friends, and that, Kyuka states that they will have to stop her by force, and Tenka explains that this is the attitude that anyone in the defense force should take, Demoniaca must take, and upon hearing this Yuki tries to stop the fight between them, but Aoba arrests him, and puts him in a distant place, so that, they can start the battle, and once that's done she calls Kadamura to fight Kyuka while she takes care of Tenka, and she, in turn presents herself as a girl who is dating Yuki, and meanwhile, the humanoid outside continues the fight, however, Kuma is caught by Shushu, who sets out to crush him completely, but when trying to do this, she notices that the Shuki is not like the others, after all he is much more resistant, and so she, decides to just throw him against the ground, but he remains intact, and the humanoid explains that both he, and she will not be, easily hit, after all they are the worst opponents they could have, and as for Yachiho, she stops time to hit her enemy, but he manages to at least hit her clothes, making, with Yachiho being half naked, and meanwhile, Shikoku is informed about Squad 7 being in a fight against some of the humanoids, and upon hearing that the, demonic defense forces have already arrived there, Shikoku deduces that this is the best time for them to make the declaration of their, god, having said that, she asks what her colleagues thought of her idea, and the humanoid states that doing this will be nothing, worthy, after all they must make it seem like something divine, and then Shikoku understands her, and decides to do things her way, and while the commander, and the other girls continue on the mission, Nei stays in the dorm, hoping they come home, safely, and then the fight between the commander and Aoba begins, Kyuka feels calmer now, after all she needs, time to regenerate after putting your squad in danger, and although his heart is on fire at the situation, Kyuka states that he is still capable of fighting with his head at least, cold, and while facing one of the Shuki, she feels that she has less attack power now that she is not united with Yuki, and the, however, she remains firm in the fight, and guarantees that she will avenge the Shuki's victims by putting an end to him, and meanwhile, Tenka continues his fight against Aoba, who in turn realizes that Tenka doesn't just have the, teleportation as her trick up her sleeve, in which she starts to move at superhuman speed, leaving Tenka confused about its location, and then Aoba tries to attack her, but Tenka teleports away again, and then she comments about the humanoid's house being, being destroyed by those fights, but Aoba states that everyone has already evacuated the area, so everything is fine, with that being said she takes, a peach, and Tenka warns her that consuming this food in excess is very dangerous, but Aoba states that this fruit has been its source, of energy since the accident she suffered, so she prepares for combat again, and states that Tenka is a destroyer of, homes, after all she attacked her brother Yuki, and meanwhile, Tenka analyzes his enemy, and confesses that Aoba is in fact incredible, because she has excellent abilities, combat skills, and when attacked again, Tenka uses her teleportation, but Aoba predicts where Tenka will appear, just listening to the sound of the portal, in this she explains that her senses become more acute when she consumes the peaches, and when she notices the extreme speed of the, girl, Tenka states that he is not capable of attacking her, and Aoba states that he will tire his enemy until he can expel 
expel her from the cave. And Tinka in turn says that this is a lost war for Aoba. After all, she is capable of teleporting 666 times in a row. So his plan is to resist until Kyuka defeats Aoba. And in the meantime, Shushu goes through difficulties while face Coco. And when throwing a stone at her, the humanoid Shuki attacks her. So Sarah asks if she is okay, and Shushu says yes. But Coco soon interrupts them and states that they won't be able to do anything just by throwing a tiny rock in their direction. That said, she activates her coconut juice ability, which consists of improving her physical and regenerative abilities. And with that, Shushu notices that she barely managed to cause a single scratch on Coco, and she states that she just wants to get it over with, to go save Yuki soon. And upon hearing her talking about the boy, Coco informs that she licked him all over, and in addition, she claims that the boss of the humanoids. She also has a crush on Yuki, so Coco tells her to accept the situation, because the boy belongs to them now. So Shushu gets even angrier, and Coco informs that the Shuki's next target is the commanders, and after doing all this, their next step will be to create hell in that place, and make everyone in the country know them. So Shushu notices that that Shuki next to his enemy is a being that has already been documented by the demonic defense force. Because eight years ago, this same monster was seen in a bush accident in Kagoshima, and when he remembered what happened, Shushu stands up again and states that that Shuki's trajectory is about to end. So she asks Sarah to put the S formation in practice. And upon hearing this, Coco assures herself and tells them both to go all out, but they start to run to get momentum. And this Sarah throws Shushu at her enemies, and she explains that the S in formation means small, but when entering the body from Shuki, it activates his ability to grow within him. And after Shushu breaks the enemy's body, Sarah launches an attack against Coco, who soon falls to the ground defeated, and this the humanoid wonders how the situation got to that point, and Shushu explains that she provoked a girl in love, therefore, she's just paying the price for her actions. And in the middle of all this, more Shukis appear, and meanwhile, Yachiho comes across his sister in trouble, and then she activates her ability, Golden Hour, and goes back in time five seconds, in which she manages to save her sister at the right moment. And then the humanoid is surprised by Yachiho's accurate deduction. And in the middle of the fight, one of the Shukis shows up there again, but Yachiho uses his ability to freeze time for five seconds, and then she notices that the enemies are aiming their attacks only at Imari. Then Yachiho asks her to stay back, just in case. But as soon as she says that, the Shuki go on the attack, and then Yachiho activates the ability to freeze time for five seconds again. But when doing so, she realizes that she has already used this skill many times in a row, and after her attack comes to an end, the humanoid appears behind Yachiho and tries to attack her, but Himari manages to save her sister in time, and claims that she is now the. It's her turn to protect her. After all, Yachiho has been protecting her all this time. But shortly after, Yachiho states that her ability is already charged and ready for use. So she asks Himari, stay nearby, and calls that pose Azuma formation. Having said that she goes back to thinking about the cons of her ability, and says that if the enemy hits her while moving, she will not be able to pose in preparation for her attack. However, Yachiho states that if she continues in that position, she will be able to react in time. But Himari says that if, if they continue only on the defensive, the enemy will remain ignoring them. So Himari suggests that they start to move, but Yachiho explains that they can't afford to risk so much, as any wrong move could mean they're in. After all, she has a limit to using her abilities. In this case, Himari says she has a plan. In this case, it is a secret weapon that she had been saving up to use on a rainy day. In, however, she will use this weapon now, because with this equipment, they will be able to make the humanoid come out of hiding. But Yachiho wonders if his sister really has all that power. In this, Amari states that he has become stronger since joining Squad 7 and participating in the exhibition match. And at the same time, noticing all this trust in his sister, Yachiho tells her to act quickly. And then Himari takes several weapons out of her hair and says that we'll use them to shoot in all possible directions, as this will eventually hit the humanoid. And in doing so, they finally locate the target. And the humanoid deduces that the two are planning to kill it with a collapse or something like that, in which Yachiho uses his prime time ability to go back in time 10 seconds. Done. This gives her the true location to Himari, who starts shooting at the humanoid. And then Yachiho sets out to return his sister's favor when they return home. But Himari again makes it clear, who does not intend to return to the Izuma house. And in the meantime, Tenka continues to resist with his teleportation ability. And at a certain point, she manages to position the Shuki at a specific point, causing Aoba to hit him by accident. And then Tenka takes the opportunity to strike her. But Aoba moves quickly again, with the intention of destabilizing the, her enemy. But Tenka claims that she already knows her movements perfectly. That being said, she hits the humanoid easily. But suddenly she becomes immobile and ends up receiving a well-aimed attack from Aoba. In this, she falls next to Yuki and says that her opponent's explosive attacks have also become much faster. And when she falls on the ground, Aoba goes to her and asks why Tenka didn't finish her off when he had the chance. And she explains that if, if you did that, Yuki would be upset. And upon noticing this attitude in her, the Tenka herself feels strange as she is experiencing feelings that she has never had before. At that, Aoba says that she didn't need to worry. After all, she is capable of withstanding any attack. But Aoba still says, being happy that Tenka took Yuki's feelings into consideration. And upon hearing this, Tenka is equally happy and begins to imagine the good times he can spend with his sister-in-law. In this, Aoba says she is willing to let Tenka and the others go. However, she is still determined to break into the bureau. And in the middle of all this, the other humanoids appear there and report that they had difficulties in the battle against the girls. That being said, Imari and the others finally arrive at the place. And then Aoba asks again if they are willing to get together, surrender. But before they could say anything, the cave begins to collapse and two other humanoids come towards them. And at the same time, noticing their sudden arrival, Nachiho finds the situation strange. After all, she thought these humanoids were Aoba's friends. But upon hearing this, one of the humanoids states that they have no 
connection. After all, she is part of the eight gods of thunder. That is, she is one of the leaders of the Shookies. And she also makes it clear that the, her companion's goal is to exterminate the human race. But the girl still leaves them free to worship her. After all, she is a goddess. However, Aoba makes herself available for battle and states that she will fulfill her role as an older sister by protecting Yuki. But before she can reach the goddess, Kaduma returns against her and stops her, whereupon the goddess informs that the Shuki, he was bitten by one of her snakes, so now he serves her. Then Kadumuro tries to attack her again, but Kyuka intervenes alongside Yuki, and then she promises to put that humanoid on your knees one way or another. And then, a brief monologue from Kyuka begins, and she states that she enjoyed experiencing spring, and besides, Kyuka felt that she would continue living happily with her friend by her side, until one day, the village where she house was attacked, and when looking around, Kyuka notices her friend trapped among the rubble. In this, she tries to take her friend's hand to save her, but a Shuki finishes killing the girl before she can help her, and returning to the present, Kyuka fights with this same Shuki, but this time alongside Yuki. And meanwhile, Juryu notices that their objective is already complete, and so she suggests to Shikoku that they leave the place. But the girl decides to continue there, and asks Juryu to come back without her. After all, Shikoku wants to see how strong that Shuki is. And upon hearing this, Juryu obeys his leader by leaving the place, but asks her not to stay there too long, and in the meantime, Yuki manages to land a direct blow on the enemy's hand, and then he explains that he learned how to intensify his attacks, movements during your workout. In this, Shuki takes on a faster form, and throws Yuki away, and upon seeing the other girls in the squad fallen, he turns his attention to the enemy. However, Shuki manages to land a blow on Yuki's mouth, and he in turn channels the force into his jaws, thus managing to break the enemy's armor. And upon seeing this, Shikoku gets excited, and states that he is starting to like Yuki, and then Kyuka attacks Shuki again with his own hands, and then binds him with his chains. In that Yuki holds her chains, and Kyuka states that Shuki will die there and now. After all, she learned just one technique. To cut this Shuki into pieces, in this case, the technique is called Howling Cherry Blossom. With that said, Kyuka attacks him fatally with his blade. And after finishing watching the fight, Shikoku decides to leave. So Yuki goes to the other girls in the squad to gather them, and Kyuka states that that victory was dedicated to her hometown. And as for Shikoku, she notes that that battle was in fact incredible. And on top of that, she claims that the commander of the Seventh Squad is also very impressive. However, what caught Shikoku's full attention was Yuki himself, as he looks very amused in her eyes and returning. Aoba, he meets his sister and asks if she is hurt. Aoba reassures him, saying that she is fine. After all, she will heal quickly. And suddenly, Tenka returns to the woods after taking the other girls in the squad to the dorm. And Yuki says that she doesn't needed to come back so quickly, but she explains that it's a family problem, so she feels obligated to be there. There. And besides, she asks them to be carefree about the other girls in the squad, as any eye is responsible for. Take care of them. Yuka changes the subject and asks Yuki's sister what she intends to do now, and she responds, who no longer has any intention of leading a revolt. After all, all the Shuki she gathered have disappeared, and besides, they kidnapped Koko and No, so she must go behind and save her friends. And upon hearing this, Kyuka is willing to help her, and states that Aoba no longer plans to cause harm. Problems? She can be your ally. After all, Aoba is also a victim of a bush accident. In this, Tenka is also willing to help even though she is very injured, and Aoba in turn refuses their help, as she still cannot trust the Kyuka organization as a whole. And instead, Aoba prefers to receive the help of their friends from other villages, who, by the way, have already mobilized to go. After Koko and Neon, and besides, Tenka states that if Aoba's friends already have a place to hide, it would be more. It would be wise for them to decline their offer. In this, Kyuka explains that if the Anmu Baro really is conducting the experiments there, the Supreme Commander Yamashiro, you must certainly be aware of this. And when talking more about her, Tenka describes the commander as a patriotic and insatiable, so Yamashiro would have no problem attacking Aoba to fulfill his objectives. That being said, Tenka states that the best option for Aoba and the others is to hide, so Yuki asks how long the, your sister and friends will need to hide. And when he responds, Kyuka takes him back home, and arriving at the entrance to the dormitory, Inii jumps at Yuki and says he is happy that he got home safely, and he in turn apologizes for worrying her, and explains that he's just, I live because others saved him. Then Kyuka asks about Himari and the other girls, and Inii informs her that they will be released to return to the forest after three days of rest, and then Tenka states that she will check on the girls, but before that, she decides to go back to her dormitory and heal yourself first. And before leaving the place, Tika tells Yuki that she wants to give him a much bigger reward when the two are alone again. And after that, Kyuka goes to the bath and asks Yuki to keep watch in his slave form, as he must be prepared when identify the first sign of enemy attack. At that, Inii notices Yuki with a down face and asks if he is hurt, and then Yuki explains that he is worried about the other girls in the squad. But Inii tries to calm him down and says that the demonic defense force has a very talented medical team, so the girls will recover soon. That being said, she suggests that he eats something to cheer himself up. After all, Yuki is responsible for taking care of everyone in the room. Hospital. And then she decides to go get him something to eat. And after the bath, Kyuka goes to him to turn off his ability and asks the boy to go take a shower soon before the his reward is activated. And Kyuka asks him to meet her in her room after finishing her shower. And once there, she reveals that his reward will be sleep in bed with her. And when she lies down next to him, Kyuka states that he must sleep, otherwise the reward 
reward won't come. It will end. So Yuki explains that he doesn't feel like sleeping. And then she starts to apply a leg lock to him. To make it clear that she is his master. But Yuki says she already knows. Of this. However Kyuka reminds him that at a certain point he disobeyed his orders and obeyed his sister. Thus being captured by Aoba. Then Yuki starts to apologize for this hesitation. And says that he just acted instinctively. And then Kyuka states that the. His sister also taught Yuki through a leg lock. So she's just replicating the same Aoba technique. Once that's done. She leaves him alone. And asks him to rest a little. And in the meantime. Aoba's friends remain trapped by the. Other humanoids. And then a creature appears. And goes on top of coconuts and neon to devour them. And returning to the dorm. Yuki makes a full meal for the girls in the squad. And says that she made that special feast. To celebrate the girls return. And besides. He asks if anyone would like ramen. And Himari immediately raises her hand. And her sister criticizes the taste. Himari's cooking. And states that as an older sister. She must watch what her younger sister is eating. But upon noticing this incongruity in the girl. Sarah reminds Yaki that she also lives eating snacks and sweets. So they. They leave this silly subject aside. And return to toasting. And then Kyuka asks Yuki to take care of the speech part. And he opens the. His speech thanking everyone for saving him. And suddenly Sarah interrupts his speech. So they can continue drinking. And after the party. He thinks about his sister again. And remembers when he asked Kyua how long his sister and friends would need to hide. And she replied that. It will only end once she becomes supreme commander. Because if she reaches this position. Kyuka plans to change the policies of the demonic defense force. As her real goal is. Protect Aoba and his friends. And look for a way to cure them. And upon hearing this. Aoba notes that she and the other humanoids are not. Need to worry. And in the middle of the conversation. An earthquake starts. And Yuki tries to take her sister away with them. But she decides to stay. There. And then hands an object to her brother. Asking him to correct it for her. And before leaving. Yuki tells her sister that she will find a way to find a way to help her. And returning to. Present. He explains that his biggest goal with fighting was to become a hero. However. Yuki states that his new. The objective now. Is to heal your sister. And the next day. He wakes up with Tinka on his chest. And she explains that she is there to give him a more valuable reward. Just as she herself had said she would do. And before she could do anything, Kyuka appears in the room and orders. Tinka go take care of his squad's work. Then she leaves. And Yuki tries to talk her out of it. Saying that she only stopped by his room to say hello. But Kyuka goes back to charging the boy. Because until now he apparently hasn't understood who his true master is. That said, Kyuka punishes him again to teach Yuki how to have discipline. And after that, he goes to Himari. Who soon notices a suspicious tiredness in him. And Yuki explains that the commander put him in a somewhat complicated situation. In that case, Himari leaves the matter alone. And says that she wants to improve her peach skill too, because only then can she, to have the commander's recognition, but for that, Himari states that she will need Yuki's help, and in the meantime, Shushu, keeps thinking about Yuki, and how to win him over, and as for Inii, she warns everyone about a new portal that is open nearby, so they all go towards the portal and in, Yuki then activates his slave mode, and goes into combat too, and by attacking the enemy, both reaffirm their objectives, in Yuki's case, he fights to become a hero, while Kyuka, she aims to become a supreme commander, and in the meantime, Aoba remains steadfast in her mission to find her friends, and this was another video. If you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe, leave your like, and see you next time.